Nebulizers are common medical devices used to administer medication to the airways and are also used to help keep the airways clear. People with respiratory conditions such as cystic fibrosis, COPD, and asthma often use nebulizers. Additionally, nebulizers are excellent devices to use for people who have a tracheostomy. Join me this week as I discuss some basic techniques to using a nebulizer and I will share some tips and tricks I have learned along the way. A nebulizer is a small device which uses compressed air to deliver medicine or saline in the form of an inhaled mist into the airways. The delivery system can be via inhalation through the mouth or via a tracheostomy tube. Some of the most common medicines used in the nebulizer are albuterol, ipotropium, acetylcysteine, and tobramycin. For people who have a tracheostomy and use a ventilator, saline is frequently used. Saline will help loosen the mucus and break it up. This will help keep your airways from developing a mucus plug. When you receive a nebulizer, it'll most likely arrive in a box. There will be several different parts. There will be a compressor, nebulizer canister, plastic tubing, a mouthpiece, a T adapter, and a straight piece of plastic tubing called reservoir tubing. To assemble the nebulizer, connect the plastic tubing to the compressor. Take the other end of the plastic tubing and connect it to the bottom of the nebulizer canister. Next, twist on the T adapter. If you're going to be using the nebulizer orally, you're going to want to twist on the mouthpiece. Next, you're going to attach the reservoir tubing to the other side. And now it's assembled for use in the mouth. To assemble the nebulizer for use with a ventilator, connect the plastic tubing to the compressor. Next, take the other end of the plastic tubing and connect it to the end of the canister. Next, you're going to twist on the T adapter. Once the T adapter is on there, then you're going to connect this to your ventilator tubing. The T adapter comes in two basic forms. One T adapter is the same size at both ends. If this is how your T adapter looks, you will need to attach the reservoir tubing. Simply attach the reservoir tubing. Now you can attach this tubing to the exhalation valve. Connect the exhalation valve to the reservoir tubing and connect the rest of the tubing to the T adapter. Now you simply have to insert the nebulizer canister and you can now nebulize. If your T adapter has one small end and one large end, you'll be able to connect the T adapter directly to your ventilator tubing. The large end, which is this side, will connect into your exhalation tube. The smaller end will connect into the rest of the tubing. Now you simply attach the nebulizer canister and you can nebulize. There is also another T adapter called a valve T adapter. On the valve T adapter, the end which connects to the nebulizer has a valve. When this valve is not activated, this prevents any air from leaking out from the tubing. Once you want to nebulize, you simply push up on the valve. Now the spring is activated and now all the nebulized solution can freely flow into the tubing. When you're done nebulizing, you simply disconnect the tubing and the valve springs shut. Also, to prevent any air from leaking, you can also snap shut this plastic safety cap. Simply snap it on, and now you don't have to worry about any air leaking out when you're not using the nebulizer. Once you have the nebulizer assembled, you'll want to fill the nebulizer canister with either medication or saline. Your medication will come in a small plastic container like this. Your saline may also come in a similar container. You can also use in your nebulizer a saline flush. Once you have your medication or saline, you're going to want to twist off the T adapter. 
squirt the solution into the canister. Once you have done that, twist back on the T adapter. If you're going to be using the nebulizer via mouth, you're going to want to twist on the mouthpiece. Once this is on, turn on the nebulizer. Place the mouthpiece into your mouth and start breathing normally. If you're going to be using the nebulizer with a ventilator, connect the T-adapter to your air hose. I have found the best place to connect it is between the exhalation valve and the connecting tubing. Simply connect like that. Now turn on your nebulizer and start breathing normally. Although you can place the nebulizer, anywhere on your ventilator tubing, I have found it is best to place the nebulizer as close to the tracheostomy tube as possible. The less distance the solution has to travel means more of the solution will get into your airways. I have had many respiratory therapists attach the nebulizer to the air filter on my ventilator. I do not like this setup as then the medication or saline is blown into my water chamber. The water absorbs some of the nebulized solution. The nebulized solution also gets your air hose dirty. The farther the nebulized solution has to travel, the more the nebulized solution can attach to your ventilator tubing instead of being inhaled. I have found a good place to connect the nebulizer tubing is at the exhalation valve. If this setup does not work for your equipment, try a different place on the ventilator, which is near the tracheostomy tube. When the canister is empty, turn off the nebulizer. Take the mouthpiece out of your mouth or disconnect the tea adapter with the canister from your ventilator tubing. Many times, when you're done using the nebulizer, you will have mucus in your airways. If you can still cough, take a napkin and cough the mucus into the napkin. If you have a tracheostomy tube and cannot cough up the mucus, use a suction machine and suction the airways. For more information about suctioning, Please watch my video, have a trach invent, info you need to know. I have found the best time of day to use a nebulizer is right before you go to bed and right when you wake up in the morning. If you have specific times to take your medication, please do so. But if you're using the nebulizer to run saline to loosen up the mucus in your airways, bedtime and when you first wake up are the times when the mucus will be the most bothersome. Nebulizing and suctioning at these times will help keep the airways clear and prevent complications. When using the nebulizer, if it is possible, lean forward. Leaning forward will help open up your airways this will help get the medicine and saline better into your airways. When using the nebulizer, keep the canister straight up and down. If you turn or flip the canister, the solution will leak right out. This will cause the solution to spill out onto the floor. Or if you're using a ventilator, this will cause the solution to drain into your air hose. The nebulizer compressor vibrates as it works to take room air and make it high pressure. For this reason, it is very important to place your compressor on a flat, sturdy surface. If the surface where you place the compressor is not flat, the compressor will slide off once it is turned on. Also, it is important to place the compressor on a sturdy item such as a bedside table or the floor. The vibrations produced by the compressor may cause a lightweight item, such as a box, to flip over. Do not use more than 5 milliliters of solution in the nebulizer. The medicine you receive in these plastic vials will come in either 3 milliliters or 5 milliliters. If you're using saline, it may come in 5 milliliters, but it also may be contained in larger containers, such as this, which contain up to 15 milliliters of solution. If you're going to be using a saline flush, these flushes contain 10 milliliters of solution. Placing too much liquid in the nebulizer will cause a lot of stress on the nebulizer. It will take longer for the solution to become a mist. It will also shorten the life of your nebulizer. 
if you need to nebulize more than five milliliters of solution, place five milliliters in the canister and let the nebulizer run. When the canister is nearly empty, place another five milliliters of the solution in the canister. If you have a cuff on your tracheostomy tube, inflate the cuff when using the nebulizer. This will prevent the nebulized solution from escaping out your nose and mouth. Thank you so much for joining me. Please remember to like and subscribe down below. I hope you have a great day and a wonderful week. Bye-bye.